Hello and welcome to Hatfield near London for UKHA 2004, the fourth annual event organised by the UK Home Automation Community. This is uh, the prototype for a menu-based controller that I'm building. Uh, if we start from scratch with a reset, you can see that we've got a nice graphic-based display. The protocols it can support, it could be ZAP, it could be XPL, it could be your own homegrown protocol. Um, anything that is text-based, when you navigate down through the menus, um, and then you, sort of, you get to a point where you can select an action, like on or off, it knows where, where you are, so it knows what device is. You press the button and it sends a message out of Ethernet off to whatever is at the other end, will, which will turn the, the request, the text-based request, into an action. Uh, for example, sending an X10 signal to turn the, the light off. The, the menus are they're defined on the PC. In the future, they'll be downloaded by the Ethernet interface, but just for, because it's an early prototype, they're currently coming down the serial port and we can actually update them uh, literally as you see it. So if we leave it, leave it on this one, you can see there are two items on there. If I now update the menus, it's downloading now. It's quite quick, it's just finished. It's, and we now go down exactly the same route. You can see we've got three menu items and that, that menu's got its own sub-menus, et cetera, et cetera. So updating it and, keeping, and making each one individual is very, very easy. We're a company that's developed a huge internet platform that monitors uh, any device, system or appliance within a home. Uh, it takes in signals from those uh, pieces of hardware, irrespective of the protocol that they make talk, and then stores the information on uh, the internet platform in a huge database. It, we then give internet access to that database to the general public, so you can maintain a contacts list of people that you want to be informed if there's a problem within your home. Uh, our main area of work is uh, alarm monitoring, so when your burger alarm is uh, activated in a burger alarm, then uh, the alarm will send a signal through to our platform. We'll provide information on the website there as to exactly what's happened, in what room, at what time. And we'll use that information to send text messages, emails and voice calls, automated voice calls, to the contacts list that you also maintain on the website. We can monitor um, camera, IP-based cameras such as this one that do motion detecting. And when the uh, camera detects motion, it informs us we use the contacts list that you've maintained on the website to send text messages, emails to your contacts to tell them we've detected motion in your room. But we can also, because it delivers us with JPEGs, send you uh, either a small animation or a set of JPEGs that you can see on your phone by MMS. So you can actually see what's happened within your property. The Compass system is a control system for uh managing alarms and security in your premises and also controlling appliances in the way you want to use them. Over here there's a variety of uh, input and output devices that can be used and we will control the system either from a keypad, from a home phone or you can dial into the system from a mobile phone as well. One of the main features of Comfort is uh, the high degree of integration with other products uh, over here is a few examples. At the top we have the Clipsal uh, bus, the C bus. We have the EIB bus here and we also have an interface with uh, Honeywell SmartFit. The latest product to uh, fit in with the fa uh, Comfort family is the new touchscreen. At the moment this is how it would probably appear when you came home with uh, ready to be disarmed. In addition to that we can uh, look at the MP3 player selection of tracks here, genres, uh, web radio and the various buttons for controlling the, uh, the volume etc. This is the door phone camera uh, in, in the release model of the uh, companion touchscreen in uh, about a month's time. Uh, we'll have features like the uh, camera popping up when somebody uh, presses the door button.
we're Dynalite Europe Limited. Uh, we're a wholly owned subsidiary company of Dynalite Australia. Uh, we do dimming systems ranging from uh, home and residential type applications through to hotels and, uh, and uh, museums. Um, and anything in between, including AV rooms, uh, conference rooms. Uh, we've recently brought out our, our new LED range. Um, we've got our DIN round mount mounted DLED C401, uh, four by one amp uh, maximum uh, LED controls. Uh, the, these directly control luminaire fittings. Uh, they can be 12 volt or 24 volt configurable. The LED controller can control uh, 48 individual channels. Um, it can control uh, 16 RGB uh, channels um, to, to allow for uh, colour mixing and uh, chase sequencing and that sort of thing. Our control panels range from uh, architectural style uh, control panels uh, and they, they range from one button control panels all the way up to 16 button control panels. Our uh, LCD touchscreen is a very good device for integrating uh, lots of uh, third-party devices including fan control, blind control, uh, audio systems, uh, all of the lighting throughout the house. You can upload uh, bitmaps through it uh, describing floor plans and our, our residential control panels which uh, can be uh, configured with Wandsworth series uh, control plates such that you can uh, have almost any finish that you require. There are a whole lot of really great home automation products on the market that do lighting control well or music control well. The big expense in home automation has always been integration and that's the price you've either had to pay in time or money to get someone else to do it for you. Zap has dramatically reduced the time it takes to get different manufacturers equipment working with each other. Zap's cross industry standard to solve the problem of integrating devices from different manufacturers. So I can flick a switch attached to a barracks barionet and the next 10 light comes on. Alternatively, I can flick a switch attached to home vision and a barionet light comes on or a C-bus light comes on. Zap Desktop is a Windows application to allow information and control everything from the current weather information to what's on telly now and next and I can pause my MP3 player whether that's a Slim, a Rio, Extrema or HomePod and then, if the phone goes, up in the top left hand of the screen, Zap Desktop will tell me who's calling. My name's Dean Barrett. I work for Rolex. We are a Clipsall Systems Integrator. Uh, we specialise in the installation of Clipsall lighting control systems to new domestic properties. The systems we currently install are the Clipsall system, which incorporates touch screens, glass satin switch, NEOs and various types of controls. Utilising Clipsall's HomeGate software we're able to provide a solution for the client which allows web access and also allows touchscreen solutions including control of their lights, opening and closing of gates, switching of camera controls and general scene setting for visitors and use around the house. Clipsall's C-Touch touchscreen has built-in IR control um, using Pronto CCF files that we've been able to create, you can utilise the infrared controls on a Dell Actin or actual Pronto control which will enable you to control any light or any switch in your house from the comfort of your armchair. What we created was a board to bridge CBUS to ZAP. So everything that happens on the CBUS network, which is contained here, every lamp or switch change that happens um, is transferred to a ZAP message that goes out and is used to trigger events on the ZAP network and anything that's a ZAP message can be used to change the state of anything on the CBUS network. We have a board that has four serial ports, one of which is dedicated to CBUS, RS485, 42 and RS232 and potentially an X10 interface as well and some parallel I.O. Um, so straight out of CBUS, straight into ZAP, neat embedded standalone solution. We then took that concept and used the same hardware, created another board here, which again connects to CBUS on one side and comes out of there and straight into home vision on the other side. So this board again deals with all the CBUS interaction and gives messages back to home vision to allow home vision to react to CBUS changes 
or indeed Home Vision to control CBUS. This requires a new ROM that runs in Home Vision that we've coded, which is version 3.4, which will be available shortly. Um, and the beauty of using a hardware solution is all of the CBUS processing is offloaded from the Home Vision Pro controller, allowing it to run faster and more efficiently. There's also a software solution which does away with this board totally, allows you to go straight out of serial port on Home Vision or Home Vision Pro, straight into the CBUS network and gives you the same functionality of controlling CBUS lights, reacting to CBUS event changes, totally contained within the, the Home Vision macro structure. CBUS Wireless, one of our new product ranges, allows you to, in a retrofitable environment, remove your existing light switches and then install a CBUS wireless switch. No neutral is required and it will install and connect to an existing installation. So your switch wire and feed is just connected in the normal way. What this allows you to do then, through the remote control, is actually set scenes within your environment. This could be in a room, could be in half the house or the whole of the house, allowing you control and flexibility of your lighting system. We also have devices here that allow you to connect into a conventional socket, again giving you RF control. One of the beauties of this system is that it allows you to have two-way communication. This is achieved via the RF in the retrofitable environment and where you may be having uh, an extension built, you could wire your extension in a hardwired CBUS system and coming through the CBUS gateway allows both systems to communicate in real time. This gives real true functionality for this system. This is predominantly run over the Saturn switch, which is available only in the glass fascia at the moment, um, but will be coming out in other finishes later in the year. Cellcount is a, a product to allow you to control your music from a PDA. Uh, uses a server on the PC and a PDA program uh, communicated via a wireless network. It allows you to browse uh, your music and select music to play. Uh, and uh, it supports a variety of players and database uh, formats for your music. Currently there's a PDA client, but there's also planned to be a Windows PC client. Uh, and it can also be extended to other players and database formats uh, fairly easily. It's very modular. We've got several exciting products here at the show, including uh, mini ITX motherboards and cases, uh, and also peripherals such as touch screens that you can use to set up home media players. This is the Iotanashi fanless case from Japan. It allows an M10000 Mini ITX motherboard to run completely fanless with the use of heat lane technology. Um, at the moment it's set up to run as an HTPC. Uh, on top of it is a 8 inch touch screen. Um, it's fully touch sensitive uh, controllable. Uh, it's also controllable via uh, remote control. This is a uh, motherboard called the SV823A from a company called Lex Bonatech, which is a Taiwanese company that specialises in four small form factor motherboards. It's got four um, independent video captures that can run a uh, full rate video capture, uh, ideal for a CCTV system. This is a 1U rack mount server unit that houses four motherboards. They all run at 800 megahertz. Um, and they've all got three network interfaces so they can either be used as servers or firewalls. It's the Via Epia M2 12000 motherboard with a 1.2 gigahertz processor. It's the newest uh, arrival on the Mini ITX motherboards. Um, it's a fully embedded motherboard that will basically do everything. CAT5 TV is a system to distribute audio and video signals over CAT5 structured cable in, in your houses and uses um, some boxes like these which convert the signals to be suitable for transmission over the cable. What we have on the stand today is the latest development which is the CAT5 switcher. This enables multiple source equipment like DVD players, um, CD players, set top boxes to be all located in a central position or at various points throughout your home, fed back to the switcher and then distributed out to different rooms within the house. The switcher is controlled 
um, in a variety of ways, um, either via a serial port from a computer or home vision, Crestron, AMX, any other media control system, or via infrared commands. Um, it features a command set which enables you to change all the inputs at the same time, should you wish to do so, or you can individually address particular channels and change them to whatever input you desire. The latest thing to be released from Cat5 is an infrared upgrade for the existing Cat5 units. This takes the form of a small circuit board which is fitted to the existing units. Um, there's a small jack connector which has to be fitted through the end panel of the box, a circuit board which fits into the, into the lid of the existing case, and a small wiring harness that is wired to the existing circuit board, just requiring a, a handful of solder connections to perform the upgrade. Once fitted, this enables any infrared signals received in the viewing room to be repeated to the source equipment to give control of that. It also repeats SCART control signals from the source equipment back to the TV in the room. So if, if the set-top box says this is a widescreen picture, the TV will follow suit and switch to widescreen. Basically the principle behind XPL is to get devices to talk to each other so that if you've got a barcode scanner um, and a database or you've got a display unit and a doorbell unit so that when one, one thing happens it will trigger something else. Um, what we have to drive this is we have an engine, XPL, HAL, and basically what you can do within this is List, uh, this lists all the devices that are actually on our network, things from one-wire temperature sensors um, to overlay display devices. One of the powers behind it is that we have a, a thing that we call determinators. Determinators essentially allow you to pick a set of conditions and based on those conditions certain actions will take place. One of the things that we've actually got set up is, for instance, I button at the door um, what we have is we have a setup that shows that when a particular I button, which is one of these yellow one wire devices, um, gets actually triggered on the um, development board here, which is just a pick development board, what will actually happen is that will actually trigger um, the home vision unit to actually open the door solenoid unit. This camera here will capture a picture of the person opening the door, um, it will speak opening the door and also we'll get a display message up on our, our unit. We've also got a lot of, uh, done a lot of work with um, audio players. Um, one of the things that we have got is what is Rio Net. Um, basically it's a web-based interface which allows you to connect Rio's, Extremers, Slim MP3s um, to a common set of uh, web pages so that you can drive your uh, audio equipment straight off of XPL. So you can actually send it messages, XPL messages, and that'll actually drive the music. These are the barracks products. This is the barracks to, um, Extrema Digital. Extrema Digital, which is like the, a later model of the standard Extrema. It has the optical digital output as well as I.O. for infrared. So infrared can, can be encoded, get transferred to the other side of, the, of your MP3 player and then come out to control your amp or whatever. Uh, you got the in streamer here, which does the encoding of analog signal, so it turns it into an MP3 signal, and then obviously transmit that as you would with any other MP3 signal to be played by any MP3 player. We have the announcecom. This is like a door access system. We have speakers, we have microphones, and a digital output, so that you can actually put that near an access point, like a door or something. And with the speaker and the microphone, you can actually speak to the people via Ethernet. And if you're happy with them, press the button, and that will control door latches, you know, electric gates, or whatever to control them. Okay. And we have the barrier barrier net, which is a general IR, general I/O module that will give you Ethernet control of input and output with a couple of relays. RS-485 as well, as well as uh, Ethernet and Serial. And with that, you will have uh, the new one. This is like an expansion. If you run out relays, you just simply plug this in, like so. Then you instantly double your capability. 
This is an RS-485 module. It's supposed to go behind a wall switch, which then you can connect mechanical switches to that, which then feed out um, RS-485. Hello and welcome to the UKHA show stand featuring integrated technology and control and laser business systems. Thank you. <laughs>